I'm Matt Brandon, and this is the Onfield Media Project. Today, what I'd like to do is walk you through a piece of software that I think is really tailor-made for organizations like yours that are wanting to tell their story through photos. It's a, a very simple app that you can download for free, or you can pay a, a moderate amount of money for the paid version. It's called SoundSlides, SoundSlides and SoundSlides Pro. Now, SoundSlides works with JPEG photos, same kind of photos that you shoot through your mobile device or using your tablet. It also will work with audio files, same audio files that you can record with your uh, phone or with a tablet. And it combines the audio file and the slides to do a slideshow that will work um, to, to tell a story. You can add uh, narration or just music or however how you want to, to do it. Then, uh, not in this uh, not in this screencast, but in the next one, I will show you how to then upload this to your website to be able to use it and embed it into your blog. You can also I'll also show you how you can then export it as a um, as a video. Now, somebody might be saying, "Well, why can't I just use?" Why can't I just use um, the, the native video maker on my computer, like uh, Windows Movie Maker or, um, or iMovie on the Mac? You can, except this particular software is designed for interaction with the viewer to where they can scrub through it and look at an individual picture. Uh, they can um, get captions, turn captions off, things like this. It's, it's a really nice, uh, nice way to present your story. So let's get into this and uh, try to uh, get through it uh, and it, so that it doesn't take all day to do it. Uh, this is SoundSlides. This is the website. It's soundslides.com. And at SoundSlides, it has, you have, um, you've basically you've got um, three versions available. You have a free version that is branded so that it, the name SoundSlide comes up as soon as it loads and then goes away. And it has basically everything you'd want. Then it has a basic version and then it uh, for $40. And then there is a SoundSlides Pro, which has um, more audio features available in it. The I think that the, the, the irony here is uh, the basic sound slides for $40 is just a slideshow. It has no audio on it. The free version actually has audio. It's just like the pro version except that it's branded. So I tell people just get the free version and use it. The branding only comes up for a split second and then goes away. It's not like it's through the whole show. So it's a, it's a great... Um, uh, available tool for you and you just have to download it from soundslides.com and then just go right here and click on that and download it and start to work now so let's uh, let's open up the download and so you'll open it up and it'll bring you into a dialog box that looks like this let's close these windows up and it's going to say, create a project, new or old loader project. We want to create a project. So we're going to hit create. And then it asks you to name the project. This is really just going to be naming a folder to store all your files in. So we're going to call this Ladakh. And we're going to put this right on the desktop and save. And you can see it popped in right over here. All right, now the next window you have is uh, the option to be able to load JPEGs and a sound file and then to customize the height and width of the slideshow. Now this is important right here because this is going to give you the, the, the output of your slideshow and if you have a very narrow blog then you need to make sure it's like 550 or something width. If you have a blog like mine, where I have um, the width is about 700 pixels wide, you want to make sure it fits that and not be um, too big or too small. So this is where you change it. You just double click in here and go 700 and then click here and 
uh, and then there you want to put, um, uh, I believe I figured it out, it was uh, 394. All right, and then you want to enable full screen. Now, this is a little tricky because we want to be able to let people to look at this full screen. Most people actually won't, I find, but the option is there if they want to look at these big. And so I upload the images uh, in the slideshow at 1920 by 1080, all right? But now it's 72 DPI. Don't be putting 300 DPI images. They'd be too big to do anything with. But um, 1920 by 1080, and that will, that's the largest that sound slides can go. And I'll show you how you can uh, make sound slides show those at full resolution. So, but right now we're going to uh, hit JPEG. We're going to go to the desktop and then we'll find, I have all of my media stored in one place called Harvest for this particular demo. Now, uh, this is assuming that you have your photos already uh, produced and you have some sort of an audio bed, either music, could be just music, could be a song, uh, or it might be a narration, or it might be a combination of all the above. Uh, but that it's all done, and and you know idea of how long it's going to be, like two minutes or three minutes or whatever. I would not go much more than three or four minutes on these shows. People tend to lose interest after a while. But anyway, so go to where your photos are, click open, and then it'll start loading the images. Now I only put in 14 because we were just doing a demo. They were not doing a, a real slide, you know, story here, a, a photo essay as it were. Um, all right, so now those are loaded. And then the next option is to load your sound files. So same thing, you go in, you find your sound file, you hit open, and then it'll load the sound file. And that's the window, this is your workspace right here, ignore that. Uh, this is your workspace right here, and your workspace is has your thumbnails of all of the photos that you've uploaded, as well as uh, down here, it actually has your audio bed. Now, unfortunately, SoundSlide, there's, it is limited. There are certain things it doesn't do well. And one of the things, it doesn't give you like a uh, wave file that you can actually see down here. Uh, the music is there, you can hear it. And you then can adjust your images to how long you want them to appear, and and that way you can time, you can time the, um, oops, sorry, you can time the music to the slideshow, and it's quite easy and very intuitive. Now I want to go over some of the some of the windows here and uh, a couple of the uh, little options up on the menu screen up here. So we'll just start with the left here and work our way over real quick. So these are the slides, and this is sort of the, the little gallery where you keep all your slides. And you can move these slides around and rearrange them. In fact, you'll want to. What I do, you there is a way to actually type uh, on in inside this thing and type titles and things like that, but they're, they're dog ugly. They're really bad. So uh, I always create a title slide myself. So here you can see we have the barley harvest is the title slide. And um, just do that in Photoshop or some sort of editing software and put it there. Then you might want to have another slide. Now you notice these two are the same slide, but one has writing on it and the other one doesn't. That's because this one has information that I put on there instead of using uh, instead of using the option of lower thirds, which I could type in information there, it's quite complicated to do. And I just found it's easier just to type it on the slide and put it there. And now here's the cool trick, watch this. So here's the, here's the slide, all right? And as I, as I play this slide, you'll see that when the next slide, this fades out, the next one comes in, it looks as if we're, that the, uh, the text is actually fading when it's the whole slide that's fading. It's the same kind of trick you do with a PowerPoint. Um, you can watch. You see? 
And you could do that with others as well. So here's uh, this lady, uh, Sonam, and I made a slide here, and then I'll have this slide here to where when her name comes up, it'll then fade away onto the next slide, you see? Just like that. All right, and the same way with with her husband down here. Now, while we're in this particular window, I want to show you that I purposely added a portrait mode or a vertical slide here in the midst. You notice that all these slides are horizontal. I have a personal preference that if I am making a slideshow for a um, electronic media, electronic media generally, with the exception of, a, of, of an iPhone every once in a while, it's meant to be viewed, it's meant to be viewed horizontally. TVs are horizontal, computer screens are horizontal. And, and so use up that real estate. If, if you see what happens here, when, when we play this, you get this effect of what they call barn doors on each side of that image. And it, it just, it ruins the flow. Now you can zoom in and do it that way, or you can just remember when you're taking the photos to shoot them all in horizontal because you know you're gonna be using it in a uh, electronic slideshow, okay? All right, so that's that. Now, let's go on to the next window, slide info. Now the slide info is, um, is where you can add captions to your picture. So let's find someone, let's, let's hear, here's her name. So we'll type in here, caption uh, is uh, Sonam, and we'll say the barley harvest, sorry, um, I don't wanna call it that. Uh, anyway, just call Sonam the Ladaki lady. There you go. All right, so there's the title, nothing great. Uh, but you'll, you'll see later, I'll show you how this caption shows up. Then you have the option underneath here under slide info details and then movement to do what in the Mac world they call it a, a Ken Burns effect. You can zoom in and out. A lot of people like that. Personally, I don't. I just leave it and, uh, and let the slides speak for themselves. Then we have a window that has the template. Now this template is when this is all done, it's going to export this as an HTML file, like a, a web page. And you may not use that web page, um, but you can if you want. Um, and you could link your blog by link to this web page, or you can choose to embed this into your blog. Either way, um, but if, if you choose to link it, then you have this big page with this um, slideshow on it, and this is what this helps. So you have a header, and the header is the title of the slideshow that's over under Project Info. We'll get there in a minute. Um, I usually don't show the header because I tend to embed my slideshows into my blog, and I've already given the blog title the name of the slideshow. Uh, center and HTML, just... Generally, I leave that on center. Show controls, you definitely wanna have the controls. Even if you embed now, all these will be there in the embed. So controls, footer, uh, that shows captions, shows credits, you want those. Uh, you don't need to show size, no one cares about the size. Show captions by default. Sometimes you might want that, I usually keep it off. Thumbnail menu, um, I'll show you how that works. I like to have that play automatically, definitely don't like that. People don't like it when things start playing automatically. Uh, scrub preview, uh, I'll show you that, that's really fun. And then show volume, and then loop slideshow, you don't want that either, unless you're at a kiosk or something at a trade show. All right, so that's that. Then uh, you can actually change colors as well. Um, you can click anywhere on here and change the color value of any of these things. So that's kind of fun, so you could, could say, all right, I want this background to be sort of blue or whatever, you know. Uh, actually, I don't like it. Let's say a dark um, there, maroon. That's kind of fun. So we keep that. All right. 
Now, fonts, I tend to keep everything at Arial, so keep it all the same. I like consistency. All these defaults are fine. Just go on. Transition shell, um, I mean transition. I tend to leave it at crossfade. You can go straight cut depending on what you want. You have the option down here to change your um, to change your um, transition individually. So if you don't want the default one, you can go to something else and you can make those depending on whatever you want along your slideshow. So I default just with um, crossfade. I think it looks nicer. But I set this for about two seconds instead of one. Okay, then there's this last one called shell. Now this is very important. Under all these options you have here, go for the ISO HTML5. If you don't choose that and you choose any of the other ones, they look nice on the web, but they don't play on an iOS device. And there are so many people with iPhones and iPads that, um, you know, for whatever reason, Apple doesn't like to use Flash, and all these other are Flash-based. This is not. It's HTML. So it will play on an iOS device where the other ones will not. So do yourself a favor. The world's mobile, and half the world's on an i device of some sort. So leave that at HTML5. Okay, project info. For whatever reason, this always defaults to this one, but uh, I'm going to rename this, and we're going to call this... Um, the barley harvest. Okay, and then uh, credits. Go ahead and put your credits here. Here's a little trick. If you want a copyright sign on a Mac, you use um, you use Option G, and it gives you a copyright sign. All right, and then it's uh, 2014, not 2011. And then you call. You put the music up there. Um, and title your music. Um, plowing song. And so on and so forth. Okay. And then audio. This is where if you wanted to change your audio. Let's say your audio was too long. After you 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 finished everything. You realize your audio was too long. You can edit your audio and your original, your original audio. And then re-upload it. Re-import it. And it will it will just go right into your show and fit um, with your transitions and everything as they are. Or you can discard audio completely. All right, that's basically this. Now, I want to show you one more thing. You go back here. This is how, let's say you got too many slides or you got one in there by accident. You can take that and just dump it in the trash bin. So we're going to do that. So now we have these all set up. Everything's fine and dandy. We're basically ready to, uh, to show this thing. So um, up here um, you have some options I'm going to go over with you but first I want to show you um, if you're trying to get your slides to fit in a certain spot on your let's say there's a narration and you want a words to happen at a certain time to match a certain slide you may you can move these slides around but when you do the slide to the right is the only one that changes. This can be good and it can be bad at times. So just be advised about that and you might have to then make other ones longer and shorter and just keep working your way down the line with that. Um, if you remember this one, there's a lot of text here, right? So this may take 15 to 20 seconds to read this text. So if we, if we make it around 15 seconds, which would be, if this is 15 seconds, that's gonna be about that big. Okay, maybe a little less. Then we don't need another version of that same slide to be going on for another 10 seconds. So I take this slide after I have something like this or um, say, you know, one of these names like this. I'll take the next slide and I make it quite short. Um, so for this one, I will make this slide quite short so that when we're looking at it, and we play it, it has the long enough time for people to read what it says, and then when it fades, it doesn't stay on it very long. Okay, another little tip there. Now, let's say that, that you've got all these things, 
you know, worked out to the length that you want and everything's cool. But you have like a bunch of this extra stuff down here and it's and they're all sort of different lengths and you'd like some consistency. Well, here's a cool thing. Set your cursor on the last slide that you that, that, that you don't want changed. Then come up here and under tools, you have spread images out equally and spread remaining images equally. And if you spread images out equally, it's going to spread all the images in the whole slideshow exactly equal. Okay, we don't want that. So we want all the rest of them to be equal. where We want the first ones to remain as they are. So we hit that. And it gives you a, you sure you want to do it, dialog box. And then now all the rest of them are equal. See here? So that's, that's kind of nice for filling up the space in the slideshow. All right, then one last thing before we wind up here. Under, um, under Modify, you have all these options here. One of them is Lower Thirds. So you can actually put, Lower Thirds is a term used for like, um, you know, in, in, uh, in news reports where they have the person's name underneath them. Or if you're interviewing someone, you'll say the mayor of, of New York or whatever, and you put that down there. That's Lower Thirds. So you have the option to be able to do that here. But you have this other thing right here, advanced parameters. Okay, under advanced parameters, it stops right here at at uh, shell folder ISO uh, iOS HTML15. That's the last thing we added. Okay, now if we add, we need to do something. In fact, let me show you first. Uh, I'm going to do a test of this show and show you what we get. We hit the well, let's save first. So we save it. And then we hit test. And test opens up the show in a browser. And there we go. There's our show. And it's all hunky-dory. And I'm going to go through all this little stuff. But first, I want to show you the full screen option. If we hit full screen, this is supposed to go to 1920, remember? You see, it's not 1920. In fact, it's, it's more like maybe 950 or 1,000 pixels wide. But we want 1920, almost 2,000 pixels, and that's not it. So how do we get that? Let's close that up. The way we get it is over here under this Modify Advanced Parameters, and we come over here, we hit Add, and we're going to hit that twice, and that's going to give us two empty little values over here. And uh, now I'm going to just click and, and copy and paste because I'm – not the best typer in the world, and I want to make sure it's right. So, but you're going to type in there max underscore full screen underscore width, and then the width, remember, was 1920. And then the next one you're going to do, it's almost the same thing. The next one's going to be um, max underscore full screen underscore height, and that one was what? That's right, 1080. All right. So we've got that. Now if we save and then we do a test and we hit full screen, bingo, it's big. Now you see how this is small right here though? Uh, that's because we need to resize, um, I believe that the, the reason it did that is we need to go back under here and redo our output size. Um, even though it's there, I think we just need to apply and let it reprocess the images. That was under Modify, Output Size, and all we did was hit uh, Reprocess these images. All right. Now, in theory, I think that should work. I hope so. There. That was what it was. All right. So now you see it's nice and big. All right, now let's look at this slideshow and look at the attributes of it because it's really nice. This is what I'm saying is it, you can do it with a video program, you know, um, but you're not going to get some of the stuff that this is um, specifically designed to work with photographers. So here you can see I run my cursor around it and I see a scrub bar brings up little thumbnails in the scrub bar. That's nice. I like that. Then you also have, here's the obvious, you have the time of the show, you have uh, the volume. And then you have this. This is a little thumbnail 
index. And you can jump through the slideshow using this and look at the different images. Now, remember we talked about um, captions. So here under show captions, I'm going to zoom in here so you see this. Under show captions, there's the caption, the Ladaki lady, right? And then under show credit, there's the credit for the photographer and the music. And then this visit my blog is actually a hot link that you can make um, back. Let's close this up now. Uh, back under here, under this advanced parameters, you can create a extra link it's called and then put whatever link you want under there. And that will actually take you to whatever that link is. So that's sound slides and it's it's an amazing little app and we haven't really shown you how to incorporate it into your website and we're going to do that later because it, it this has already gone really long but briefly what you're going to do is you're going to export this it's going to give you a publish to web file and you're going to rename that publish to web so um, you find it there it is and you might rename that barley harvest but you're going to name it lowercase because this is actually going to be part of the URL. Um, barley underscore harvest. And then you actually upload that file through uh, your FTP client to your website. And that becomes a page on your blog or whatever. Uh, and then um, that's how you connect it to your, your website. I will come back on another time and show you how to embed this into a blog so it's much easier for people to view it. But that's Sound Slides, Sound Slides Plus and Sound Slides, and available at soundslides.com. Well worth it. I'm Matt Brandon, and this has been the On Field Media Project. Thank you.